Hey guys, so I know that I said I was going to do a favorites video since mine, the audio had cut out. Um, if you saw my community post, I had shared about that and said that I was going to be uploading it sometime in the next few days. However, I'm really struggling to find the time to make that work because I'm actually about to head out to Washington to take care of some family stuff, but I did want to get a video out for you guys and share a little bit of a project that I've completed lately and I thought that it would be really fun to show you. So we are looking at my ancestral altar or you know also known as my altar for the dead. I tend to use those terms interchangeably probably more so now. Um, I'm going to be doing a separate video on some of the things that I have been discovering as I've actually been really researching my ancestry lately and it's been a fascinating process. But that's for a separate video. Today, I just really wanted to share what I have been working on redoing my ancestral altar. I'm sure you can see me gesturing here. Um, <clears throat> so first things first, up here, I decided to make a little spot for my beloved pets. So as you can see, Luna and Prue are up there. And then I have some, um, some of my childhood pets too. I'm, I actually just went through and Pulled out some photos that I'm going to be putting up here as well and then I'm also going to be putting a picture of Freya up here embracing some cats because when I like to think that my kitties go to Freya when they pass so if you've been watching my channel for a long time you will have seen Luna and Prue they were my cats that I got when I graduated high school and um they both lived to be 16 and 17. They died six months apart. They were sisters. And in my previous videos, before October of 2020, when Luna passed away, you would see them rather frequently. They made their presence known in almost all of my videos, both of them. I was very close to them and it's been hard to lose them. So I made a spot for them. Um, Prue died a year ago. And Luna a year and a half ago so it's still kind of fresh and I think it's gonna be a while before I can talk about them without wanting to cry but yeah so it felt good to have this little space set up here for them and to have um, their urns and their photos so I did have to switch some stuff around on my ancestral altar and the first thing I really wanted to share is this little cabinet here I had found this at a garage sale actually just down the street and um, what I had done was I had taken the cabinet and stained it a darker color just because it was a very light wood, almost comparable to this color. And um, then it had a mirror on the back. And I didn't necessarily want to remove the mirror or put like sticky contact paper over it. So I just decided to buy some of that stuff that's like that window cling. You can use it for, um, some of it has like prism window cling in it so it can make the <clears throat> the rainbows from prism or uh, room darkening r window cling. And I decided to do like the room darkening stuff. So this is seriously just window cling on, a, on the mirror on the back here. And I thought it was a really good idea because I could take it off, use the mirror for something else if I wanted or what have you and not ruin it. Um, but I thought it looked really good because I just didn't like the look of the mirror as a backing. So, um, yeah, I did have a shelf up here and I actually removed it and I'm going to be hanging it somewhere else in my bedroom, but I needed the space for this. Anyway, um, so I have Santa Morte over here because she always likes to hang out on my altar for the dead. And then this little thing back here, this is another one of those um, family tree photos. I'm actually going to be putting photos of my ancestors in there. However, when I purchased it, it came without the little frames, which I found a way around, um, and the actual stand base. So I have to make a, a base, and I'm going to be doing that. And as soon as that's done, then I can hang all the photos. But for now, it's just going to hang out there for now. Um, <clears throat> so I have her space here. Uh, this is actually a statue that I made for her. And then we have like rocks and things from 
Mexico, and uh, this is a sugar skull that my brother gave me when he went to Mexico. Kind of started this whole thing with her, as weird as that is. And then this is a monarch wing that I found. Um, so yeah, this is my ancestral candle here. And then right here is water that I always keep on my ancestral altar. These are prayer beads that I actually made for my ancestors. And this is a candle that I burn for my mother. And then I don't know why I keep this laboratory on my ancestral altar. I just do. This is a photo of some friends that I had when I was really young. There's me right there. But uh, the, the girl in the middle was one of my best friends growing up and she committed suicide in 2019 so I just kind of keep that there because I miss her terribly um this is my memento mori oracle by Claire Goodchild I use this for spirit communication and then this is a little tree that has some of my my great-grandparents my great-grandmother my grandfather my mother and then Luna and Prue I'm probably going to switch out some of the photos a little bit in here. In this little cabinet, well, first things first, up here is a lantern that I always burn when someone passes. And it's hard to combat the glare on the glass. Let's see if I can... Maybe? Yes, that's a little bit better. These are photos of my mother and I, and then there's her urn. And I have some rocks and stuff from Washington and some shells. Um, in here is some of my grandfather's ashes and one of his guitar picks. That's a photo of my grandfather playing his guitar. And then um, right there is one of his harmonicas and some more rocks and shells from Washington. And then up here is a card for the rune Othala, which is associated with ancestral and heritage. That is a necklace made by the wonderful Tara from Kittens, Weights, and Tarot. That's supposed to be like a mini ancestral altar that you can wear on your person, which I love, but I keep it here when I'm not wearing it. In that bottle is my first gray hair that I found. <laughs> this is a little statue of the Disir, which are your female ancestral spirits in your ancestral line. They are protectors and guiders in the Norse, in, um, yeah, guidance in the Norse tradition. These are more shells and rocks from Washington, and then that watch there was given to me by my uncle when I was little. He passed away when I was nine. And then this is his brother, my other uncle. So these two are both my mom's brothers. So mom, uncles. I should get a picture of my other uncle too, but um, that is my uncle Steve. He passed away just this last summer, kind of suddenly. So my mom's whole immediate family is gone. As of last year, I lost my uncle and my grandmother in about a month of each other. So <clears throat> it's been kind of rough. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to Washington in a few days. Um, up here is a little jewelry box that's got a couple of necklaces that my grandmother gave me. And then there's a photo of my grandfather and my grandmother holding my hands and helping me roller skate at their house in Seattle. That is my grandmother's engagement ring. And that is my grandparents. Love that picture because they look so happy. It's so hard with the glare, though. There we go. Although well, you can kind of see me there. Hello. Um, <clears throat> and then this is a, a card from the uh, Oracle that goes. I really, really love this depiction. So I keep this card in here when I'm not using the deck. This is my great-grandmother on my father's side. She died when I was 16. And I knew her very well. So this is one of my favorite pictures of her and I. Uh, this little sake cup is from my great uncle, her son. He actually just passed away last year too. So um, that was one of the things that was left for me. So I keep that too there for him. And then this is my great grandmother's engagement ring, which I also inherited. So that is sort of just a little quick tour of my ancestral altar and the updates that I've done on it. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I went through and did this fun little project with this uh, little cabinet and I really like how it turned out. I'm very proud of it. Um, I'm going to be continuing to kind of revamp 
this a little bit. Oh, and then that actually really quick is my other great uncle. So great grandma's son, um, his hat from the army when he served in Vietnam, he was a medic. So I hang that there for him as well. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I will continue to do more updates on this and then I am going to make a video kind of sharing the things that I've discovered in my ancestry and some of the problematic issues that I've ran into and um, all of that. I don't know when that's going to be coming out. I don't know if I'll be able to get it done before I go to Washington or after. But yeah, I did want to share this with you guys just to get something out here to show you what I've been doing and I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching and as always, blessed be.